Now a matrix is a two-dimensional array of numbers where we specify a number of rows and a number of columns. The notation for a matrix works like this. As is conventional, we reserve like a capital letter to describe the matrix, so we'll say the matrix A. And then just to be direct here, I will specify the dimensions of that matrix. So matrix A is a two by two matrix, meaning it has two rows and two columns. Because the number of rows equals the number of columns in this example, you would say this is a square matrix. So let's give a simple example. So the notation for matrices works like this. You start with square brackets, and you encase your entries or components of the matrix in square brackets. And I've just filled in some real numbers here just to give a simple example. Now not all matrices have to be square. You can have generally rectangular matrices. And the way this is notated in general is as follows. You would say A is an M by N matrix, where the first index here indicates the number of rows in our matrix. And the second index indicates then the number of columns in that matrix. So for instance, again, to see a simple example, how about a three by two matrix where we have an array of numbers with three rows and two columns. Again, encased in brackets, I can just fill in one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, there's an example of a three by two matrix. Now it's worth mentioning here that a vector is really a kind of degenerate matrix. So for instance, if I have the vector one, two, three, that's a three-dimensional vector for sure. Well, I can think of that actually as a matrix with, in this case, three rows and one column. When I constructed my two by two matrix, I really had four choices, right, for the entries I could kind of fill in. So for that reason, you can think of this matrix as an element of R to the two times two, or R to the four. So this matrix lives in R to the two times two, or R to the fourth power. Similarly, in general, I can think of an M by N matrix as an element of R to the M times N in uh, M times N dimensional space. And just to be complete here, I can think of, for instance, this uh, matrix that has dimension three by two as living in R to the three times two or six because fundamentally I have six slots or six components to fill in. It's often the case where we want to specify in mathematics or applied science, you know, we'd like to be able to refer to the various entries of a matrix. And the way that works is it's rather intuitive. So this entry, let's say, is in the first row in the first column of my matrix. So I'm going to refer to that lowercase a sub 1, 1 for the entry a in row 1, column 1. Similarly, uh, this entry, you know, that number two, would be referred to as the element A sub one two for the element in the first row and the second column, and so forth. Now to write that more generally, just to be complete here, I can then say, well, I've, I have an M by N matrix. I can denote the entries of that matrix in the following way. The first entry in the first row in the first column would be referred to as A sub one one. The next entry up, would be in the same row, so it's still in row one, so I denote it with the one, but now it's in column two, so I write that entry as A sub one, two, and so forth, all the way, let's just extend that to the end of this first row. So at the end of the first row, I'm still in row one, but now at the end, I'm in column N, one N. This is sometimes referred to as IJ notation in linear algebra, where the I refers to the row number again, and the J refers to the column number of that entry. If I zoom all the way down here to the final row, I would refer to that entry in this uh, final row and first column as the uh, element A sub M1. And if I continued all the way to the end here, I would get the last component in the matrix, which would be the element A sub MN for the nth row and the nth column.